Some people would define me as a steamroller. My dad likes to say that I am vivacious. <laughs> I would easily say one of the most dramatic aspects of having cancer as an adolescent is the separation, the, the disconnection. The first round of chemo was probably the toughest because it almost felt as if somebody had just kind of hit the pause button in my life and on no one else's. So everybody's life is moving really quickly and all of a sudden everything just stopped in mine. So I was just thinking, I mean, there has to be a better way. I'm Carly Rutledge and I'm a Ewing sarcoma survivor and I live in Boulder, Colorado. That was a little bit earth shattering. I had been accepted to the University of Colorado. My future was finally tangible. And so that was a big, I, I really did not want to halt my life again. It had metastasized in numerous places in her body and we were told that the prognosis was not good. And I also knew that the prognosis with the second line chemotherapy was even worse than the front line. When you are a passionate parent, you will rise up to the, you know, whatever it takes. So I just took it upon myself to find out what is the latest science and is there anything coming available in trials um, for Ewing sarcoma specifically. Cancer immunotherapies goes back 30 years. And in the last 10 years, there's been some huge advances. This vaccine in particular incorporates key mechanisms that allows the immune system to get better at now identifying the cancer, at being stronger to fight the cancer, and at being able to get the, past the walls that the cancer sets up. Cancer cells start to thrive in the body because they are able to escape the immune system. When, when patient has uin sarcoma, these uin sarcoma cells, they start to grow and they start to invade, metastasize, move to different places. On the surface of these cells, there is some messages that say, please don't attack me, don't kill me. And that's how the immune system doesn't get activated. Not only that, after they see these cancer cells, they don't go around the body and say, hey, listen, we, we have something that we need to attack. This immune system police is shut down. What we do is we take the cancer cells from our patients, then we take it to the lab and we introduce a new message to the genes that will stop the production of all these messages in the surface of the cells that tell the immune system, don't get activated, don't attack me. So then we prepare this vaccine and we give it back to the patients on a monthly basis. And this time the immune system not only see the cancer cell but get activated, start to kill the cancer cells and also they go to the rest of the body to tell the other cells, hey, listen, we need to kill these cells. So not only we have an initial attack for the present tumor, but also we have a troop of cells, these police that already have a memory by the time that new cancer cells come back, new immune sarcoma cells come back, they are going to kill them. And it basically retrains your immune system to be able to fight this specific type of cancer that has previously been able to fly under the radar. It just made sense to make your body more healthy so that it can fight instead of breaking it down. Just in basic principles made more sense. It's almost like your basic flu shot. It goes in your bicep and takes some five to 10 seconds to get all the medicine in and then you leave and there's no pain other than the initial stick and there's no nausea, there's no vomiting, there's no weakness or fatigue. When Carly came to us, uh, she came with an isolated uh, pulmonary nodule. So we did the vaccine and we saw that month after month, the same nodule stayed at the same size. It did not regress, but somehow this nodule become dormant or, or inactive and that doesn't happen in Ewing sarcoma. It usually explodes uncontrollably. And so the fact that this little tiny nodule in my lung refused to grow is considered dead or calcified at this point. 
is momentous. Since 1970 and on, we haven't changed the survival of patients with cancer. So I see this vaccine and other vaccines similar to it as opportunities to change the survival that we have in cancer in a significant way. Our longest patient that actually received an immunotherapy is out 21 years. He was told that he shouldn't even bother having surgery for a new brain lesion that he had. And, and he's out 20 years without the cancer ever coming back. It can happen. As we learn more, we're better at creating that situation. So my freshman year, it, being able to be here at school, I was just kind of reveling in the normalcy of it and just being able to be normal and average, just going to the library with your friends and not worrying about, did everybody put on hand sanitizer? Are there gonna be a lot of people here? Am I gonna get sick? If I had not chosen to do the vaccine, not only would I not have even been in Boulder, but I don't think I would have been able to physically do these things that I, I worked really hard for a really long time to gain my physical strength back. And at this point, we just watch and pray and hope that this vaccine continues its work in my body and we see clear scans for a long time from now. Can we live with cancer? The hope with the vaccine was that we can first stop the cancer from growing. If in a safe way our bodies can live with cancer and the cancer is no longer growing, it's like diabetes, it's like hypertension. Those diseases aren't cured, but people live a long time with those diseases, not have any problems as long as they're taking the medication. None of us want to just have that as our only goal, and that's a hope that in time we can build parts to this immunotherapy that'll allow us to shrink the cancer or maybe even prevent the cancer from coming on one day. But, but this is the first step to, to get control of it and live with it without any side effects. And that's what Carly's doing right now. It's sure gratifying for me to see when I can treat patients and not have them sick and suffer while they're getting the treatment. If I'm healthy, I'm happy. Nothing would make me happier than to see more people have this treatment with no toxicity and to see more success than they would with the second line chemotherapy and hopefully I can be the first to blaze that trail and other people will follow me with just as much success.